The Marine Institute is the national agency charged with research into the marine environment and also development of technology and innovation. So the Integrated Marine Exploration Programme is part of research vessel operations. The Institute manages the national research vessels. They would be the Celtic Voyager and its sister ship, the Celtic Explorer. Since Science at Sea has started, we've trained over 120 students and these students are coming from marine related degrees from 14 higher education institutes across Ireland. I'm just going to pass around some uh, training. My name is Paul McGrain, I'm the coordinator of the Integrated Marine Exploration Programme. It's already um, via email, or sorry, you should. Today we have 12 postgraduate students, um, again emanating from five different higher education institutes across Ireland. My name is Sean and I'm from Mary Macklin College in, in Limit. I'm my Masters in Marine Micropaleontology. My name is Teresa Brogy and I'm in Mary Hyde. Nearly finished, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, These 12 students are taking part in an advanced Science at Sea course, unique within Europe and the globe. We provide the practical element for students who would maybe have no experience of being on a research vessel before. The Voyager would take around nine scientists and six crew, generally. John Bohr is the chief officer on board, and that means that John will conduct any safety tours that need to be undertaken. Declan Murray is the Integration Marine Exploration Programme technician. So Declan provides us with the support we need when we go out to sea. Yvonne looks at the animals that live on and within the seabed. These are soft-bodied animals. They don't have a backbone. When we look at organisms that live on and in the seabed, this generally gives to us a good indication of the health of the ecosystem. Nothing beats this hands-on experience. Actually seeing them being deployed and seeing how they were operating and stuff like that. We can use dredges, for example, trawls like we use in fisheries to collect samples. Well, you, you have a tendency to look at your research in, in isolation and then when you get, meet all these different people and you can network and you see the multidisciplinary approach, I think it's a lot more holistic to your research itself. You know? We can see from the species numbers, from the species diversity, and from the abundance of organisms and animals living there, how healthy that ecosystem is. And the higher the abundance and the higher the number of species, generally the cleaner um, that ecosystem is. I do a bit of fishing myself. I, I didn't, wasn't able to identify fish really that well, and I, I learned a lot in terms of identification skills, feeling for different things and bits like that, you know. So John Boyd is our fisheries biologist. John will demonstrate what a gear to use when fishing and also when the catch comes up John will look at identifying the species contained therein and also measuring, weighing and ageing those species. This ecosystem approach that we're going to start, you know, we're going to have to look, that's a very, very, that's really, I guess, the most distinctive thing. So we can sample the seabed using a number of different instruments. We can use grabs, which actually go down into the sediment, take a big grab of it and bring it back to the surface. You know, use your hands to loosen it out, but you don't mash it. And then we will look at how do we process these samples? How do we preserve them? What methods are we going to use when we bring them back to the labs to count them? So you can select any 
I'm also the onboard oceanographer. What the profile was like, what the structure of the So I primarily like. look at um, plankton, that would be phytoplankton, the plant component, and also zooplankton, the animal component of the, the microplankton. That's the tiny, tiny organisms, very small, about five microns in size, that live within the water column. the field of, say, acquiring and processing samples. We also look at deployment and operation of various equipment and instrumentation. And then we look at how do we acquire that data? How do we quality control it for anomalous points? And how do we analyse that data? What are we getting back from all these instruments we're deploying into the ocean? Because then you're really taken into account. And we use the geophysical data in order to tell us where to sample. So when we look at organisms that live on and in the seabed, this generally gives to us a good indication of the health of the ecosystem. The data from our fishery surveys goes back to Brussels and in turn this helps determine quotas. Janine Guinan is our geophysicist. Janine uses sound to look at the seabed and as such Janine has worked on a number of different surveys that have mapped coral reefs offshore of Ireland. Off Ireland for like 200 miles, so that's that area there. And from the multi-beam data we will be able to see the formation of the seabed. So Science at Sea can act as a stimulus then for graduates and it gives them the necessary experience to maybe realise their potential as they enter the workforce as fully qualified, rounded marine scientists.